before we get too far, um, last night in Canvas was the assignment uh, online curio type activity. That online curio type activity is where you went through and you clicked on the different chromosomes. You built a karyotype, essentially, is what you did. You created a karyotype. Based upon that karyotype, you then went through and tried to determine what symptoms. Syndrome? Symptoms. Anomaly. We'll go with anomaly. Anomaly that they have. Okay? Um, also, again, long thing, but thank you. I appreciate yesterday you were really good and responsive to um, keeping those phones put away, and I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, anomalies. So there were three different anomalies. One of your, a patient A, I think, had Down syndrome. I don't remember B, he was Kleinfelter's or trisomy 13, and the other one was the other one that I mentioned. B was Kleinfelter's, and then, um, so C was trisomy 13. So these are specifically talking about trisomies, where they have an extra chromosome. Mr. Ray, there is right there, so I want to turn it away. He didn't even, he didn't even phase him, but I slammed my door. So that was trisomies. It is possible for monosomies. So these are extra chromosomes, but it is possible to be missing. Same thing, non disjunction occurs, but during that process of non disjunction, that just depends if that is the egg or sperm that fertilizes the extra chromosomes. Generally speaking, not great. Extra chromosomes is generally not great as you saw some of the, you could have searched some of those like, symptoms that they had. Questions I can answer about those or anything about that before we move on? What's that? Yes, but you'll have some class time to work on it. Yep. Okay, so yesterday we went through and we started talking about these things called sex-linked recessive traits. Yesterday we talked about color blindness. Today we're going to talk about hemophilia. Um, color blindness is in, occurs in about 1 in 12 males um, and in about 1 in 200 females. So significantly more males than females have color blindness. Hemophilia, also a sex-linked recessive trait that's carried on the X chromosome. Um, those numbers, they're going to say it in this video, it's a four minute video, they talk a little bit about hemophilia. It says um, baldness, I don't even think they reference baldness for the record. Um, but it goes through and kind of talks about this. Then we're going to do some uh, Punnett squares to kind of show this um, hemophilia. Then I have a worksheet today that is going to be homework that, depending on how this goes, you should have a good chunk of time to finish it. Okay. So first I'm going to show you a video about hemophilia. Then we'll go through and talk about it. So let's take a look at the sheet from yesterday. We did... Uh, we did the colorblind part. We're going to look at that maybe really... Nah, we're not going to look at the colorblindness. We're going to jump right to the hemophilia side. So it is... this worksheet. Okay? So this is the side we did yesterday on colorblindness. We're flipping it over, we're going to do the hemophilia set. Okay, so hemophilia, also a sex-linked recessive trait that happens to be carried on the X chromosome and only the X chromosome. So the ones that we look at when we talk about sex-linked recessive traits, we specifically are talking about things carried on the X chromosome. Are there other traits that are carried on the Y and only the Y chromosome? And the answer is yes, there are. They're not as common. And you can say, well, why aren't they as common? Partially, like, size. Like, the X chromosome's about this big, the Y chromosome's about this big. There's physically less DNA in there to code for physically less genes. Okay, so are there some? The answer is yes. There just happens to be more on the X chromosome than on the Y chromosome. So once that comes into focus, we'll take a look at this. So... Hemophilia, if we read the introduction, uh, it's another sex-linked recessive trait is carried on the X chromosome. A blood clotting disorder that it referenced, the, what was it called, the coagulation cascade? That was a new term for me. Do you, do you, does your blood clot or not blood clot? 
So X big H symbolizes the dominant allele for normal clotting, is what it says right. Dominant allele for normal clotting. Normal clotting, X big H. Whereas X little h is hemophilia. Okay, so those are some things to kind of keep in mind. This is really doing nothing more than looking at genotypes to kind of get us thinking about genotypes. So if we had a genotype of a sex link trait, I personally like to look at the sex chromosomes independently, separately first, then I like to add the characteristics we're looking at. I just think it's kind of a way to nicely separate them, make it less, a little less confusing. So it says a homozygous dominant female for normal clotting. So female, is that XX or XY? X. X. If there's a Y, it's a guy. Okay, so that is a female. So it's XX. And homozygous, what does homozygous mean compared to heterozygous? Homozygous means same. same. Okay, yep, they have the same alleles. And it says it's homozygous dominant, and it says that they have normal clotting. So in terms of H's, is it Big H, big H, little H, little H, or big H, little H? I'm sorry, what was it? Big H, yep, big H, big H. Homozygous means same. They are both same, and they're dominant, and they're for the non-hemophilia, or the normal clot. Good. Hema a female, XX or XY? XX, with hemophilia. When's the only time we see... The recessive trait? When there is no dominant. Yep. So is hemophilia dominant or recessive? And it's carried on the X chromosome and the Y chromosome? X. So what do these H's need to be? X, little h, X, little h. Okay. Another way we could say this is, the, is a female who is homozygous for hemophilia, right? We could throw homozygous in. We don't need to because she has the trait. I'll do one more with you quick, then I'll have you do the last two. Male, XX or XY? XY. Who has the normal clotting factor? So that's X, big H, and what's on that Y chromosome? Nothing. nothing, right? There is nothing on the Y chromosome. These are only carried on the X's. You try the last two quick, quickly. Quickly, you fill in those last two if you haven't done so already. All right, so male with hemophilia, XY, because it, it's a guy, X, big H or little h? And what's on that Y chromosome? Good, nothing. A female, so XX, who is heterozygous, heterozygous, it means same or different? Different. And she has normal clotting factors, so it's going to be X, big H, X, little h. Yep. Okay. Those are the genotypes. And then the idea is, I could say, uh, a female with hemophilia has a child with a man with hemophilia. And I, then you can do a Punnett square based on that. So speaking of Punnett squares, the idea of these Punnett squares are really not any different than the Punnett squares we did first semester. I, else, I still like to kind of do the sex chromosomes first, take care of those. So that's what my Punnett square would look like based on the sex chromosomes and only the sex chromosomes. If there's an X, it goes before the Y. I'm sorry, if there's a Y, the X goes first by convention. And then when we talk about the H's, the dominant or uppercase letter, like on the other side is B's, this is H's, would go first. So this is X, big H, X, little h. This is X, little h, X, little h. X, big H, Y, X, little h. Why? Now, of these four, do any of the offspring have hemophilia? Do any of these offspring have hemophilia? Yeah. 
Yep, one of the boys and one of the girls. So this girl, little h, little h, has hemophilia, and this boy, little h, has hemophilia. Now, I guess I kind of like to shade him because it kind of draws attention to it. But that is what we have. So I'd like you to go through and fill in these last two Punnett squares on your own. I am doing mine on the screen, so when you're done, you can do a quick check. And check yours. So now what this expect, these are going through and it says expected results. These are expected results are phenotypes. What are we physically going to see? Okay, and this is really just saying, is this phenotype represent punnet A, punnet B, or punnet C? Is this one represent A, B, or C? Is this one A, B, or C? Okay, so this is looking at, of all the four boxes, which punnet square would have one half of the boxes being a normal female, one quarter being normal male, and one quarter being males with hemophilia. A, B, or C. So which one is going to have half of the boxes are going to be normal females? Well, that's B or C, right? Normal, two normal females, two normal females. Then, which one has one fourth of the boxes being a normal male? Nope, right? This is two normal males, or two hemophiliac males. So this is, oh, here's a normal male, one out of four, and then one out of four with hemophilia. So this is letter B, right? Do the last two, quick. Which Punnett square goes with that description? I think, right? A and then C, is that correct? Okay. So that's the idea of this. The third question, I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to write anything, but the idea is why can a female with one X little h not have the trait, but one male with one X little h have it? Well, because how many, how many X little h's does a female have to have in order to get the trait? Two. And how many does the male have to get? And only one. That's why statistically they're more likely to get it than they are um, males are than females. Now, the numbers I found said one in 12 males are colorblind and one in 200 females are colorblind. And on the video they referenced of all the people who have hemophilia, 1%, less than 1%, I think they even said, of the female, of of all the hemophiliacs, less than 1% are humans. And like 99% of the hemophiliacs are males. So this that doesn't look at overall pop population, but I believe hemophilia is more uncommon than color blindness. Like we just we did a quick poll, I think, I, I don't remember if it was in this class or not, of do you know someone with hemophilia? Um, and I, I know someone with hemophilia, but we had like one or two other people, I think, that raised their hand. 
where when we said how many people know someone with color blindness, there were more, right? There were more. So I'm not saying it's completely impossible, but it's, it, this tends to be less common than color blindness. It's still a sex link trait, though. All right, questions about that before we move on to the homework that I'm going to give you some time to work down in class. Okay, right. so. Your homework that is due in Canvas on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. is something that we're going to get started on. We're going to do one of these together before I cut you loose and say, go. The We're going to do the first one together. These are looking at colorblindness and hemophilia, like the two we did kind of together. The difference with these are, um, it's kind of more like we did when we did Punnett Squares last semester, is where I give you kind of a description of the parents, based upon the description of the parents, then we can go through and we can build a Punnett Square. The one additional thing I'm gonna ask you to do, which is not typed in the instructions, is I'd like you to shade all of the boxes that have of, organism, of offspring that have the trait, whether it's color blindness, or hemophilia, I'm going to ask you to shade it. Now that could be using the pencil that you have with you, of the pen that you're using to fill it out, or if you want to grab a colored pencil, fine. It's just a quick shade. It kind of helps illustrate and draw attention to the, the individuals that do. So <coughs> color blindness, blah, blah, blah. Um, red, green color blindness is a sex-linked recessive trait. It's carried on the X chromosomes. Normal vision is X big B, which is dominant, over color blindness, which is X little b. Heterozygous are called carriers. Oh, I forgot to write that on the other one. Right? I forgot. I was meant to do it. This female who is heterozygous is also a carrier. Okay? A carrier is the same as heterozygous. Heterozygous is a carrier. It's just another way to say that. They carry the trait, but they don't have the trait in question. Okay. And then it talks about a carrier right here. So now we're going to go through and says that it, we have a male who is colorblind. So male, X, Y, has a child with a homozygous dominant female. So mom is X, X. A male who is colorblind. So if he's colorblind, what is the B that's going to be on his X? Is it X big B or X little b? X little b. What's on the Y chromosome? Nothing. Has a child with a woman, XX, who is homozygous dominant. So what's her X? X big B, X big B, right? Homozygous means same. Dominant means the capital letter. So x little b y x big b x big b fill in this point is square oops we put x's before the y's we put the capital letters before the lowercase letters and that's what my punnet square looks like Yes. Okay. Now, following the instructions that I asked you to do on the board, I want to go through and I want to do a quick shade of any organism that, or offspring, that has color blindness. So does this girl have color blindness? No. What about this boy? No. What about this girl? What about this boy? No. So I don't need to shade anything for this one. Okay, but I do want you to go through a chain. So now we're looking at genotypic ratios. So of the four, what are all the possible letter combinations we have? So if we just start here, the first one is we have an X big B, X little b. So we have one box that looks like this. Are there any other, of the other four, are there any other boxes that look exactly like that one? Yes or no? Yes, right? It's this one. This one and this one are genetically identical in terms of genotypes. So out of the four, there's two out of four or one half. If you want to do percentages, that's fine. I tend to do fractions. Okay, so one half of these are going to be X, big B, X, little b. 
I look over here, oh, that's a new genetic combination, that's an X big B Y, which I forgot to leave space for my genotype, or my ratio. So we have X big B Y, but any other boxes that have X big B Y, yep, that one right there. So we have one half and one half. That's the genotypic ratio. Then there's three quick questions. What fraction of the offspring, so of these four, out of four, blank out of four, how many out of four are going to be a colorblind female? How many of these boxes give us a colorblind female? What's that? None. None, yeah, zero. Zero out of four are colorblind females. Out of four, how many are going to be colorblind males? Zero. Zero. Out of four, what, oops, and I should get a little ahead of myself. Out of the four, how many are going to be a female carrier? Carrier is just an, another way to say heterozygous, right? Two. So two out of four, or we can reduce that fraction if you want to, to be one. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Okay, there's a couple more color blindness ones on the back. There's some hemophilia ones. There's some questions for you to answer, very similar to the one we just did. This is due in Canvas by 11.59 p.m. We have 20 minutes of in-class work time. My guess is in 20 minutes you'll get pretty close to finishing this before you walk out. If you don't, it's due in Canvas by 11.59 on Sunday. Okay, so let me know what questions I can answer. I'm happy to help make sure we're on task.